they say the way to get to Carnegie Hall is practice, practice, practice. I found a different way. I had a feeling like there was a big pill, like a vitamin pill, stuck in my throat. I went to my family doc, and she couldn't see anything, and so she uh, referred me to an ear, nose, and throat specialist. He opened up his laptop, looked at the CAT scan, and said, I hate to tell you this, but I'm pretty sure you have cancer. I was told that the protocol for the kind of cancer that I had was chemo and radiation, and that surgery wasn't possible. That I would have six and a half weeks of radiation um, every day, Monday through Friday. I would lose my voice, probably not permanently, but definitely for quite a while, because the radiation would burn my throat so badly. I wouldn't be able to swallow, so I wouldn't be able to eat or drink or talk. Friday evening, before she was supposed to start chemo and radiation on Monday morning, we got a call from the doctor saying there was a surgeon in Seattle that had a new tool and might possibly be able to help us. The Seattle Cancer Care Alliance is here to improve upon what's done before and offer patients something new. So she came to my clinic and I told her that um, we had been exploring with a novel uh, technique uh, that used robotic surgery to get these tumors out, but that she would be the first patient. And I just, robot? I said, I don't know anything about a robot. And Lydia looked at me and she said, you, shut up. You, tell me more about the robot. With robotic surgery, the patient essentially lies on an operating table like usual, and then the surgeon then steps in the, uh, what we call the surgeon console, where this virtual field is uh, presented and we can then manipulate the arms of the robot to perform the surgery. When we're talking about tumors of the oropharynx, we're in a very confined space and, and it's a tortuous anatomy. So having instruments that we can articulate allows us to be very precise in, in how we uh, remove a tumor. Honestly, I thought, why not be the first? Someone's gonna be the first. Why shouldn't it be me? You know, I could be the first at something. The day of the surgery, I'll never forget. Dr. Mendez came walking out of the surgery room into the waiting area, and he had this sort of bewildered look almost on his face. And I didn't know how to read that. I didn't know if something had gone wrong. It had only been like 40 some minutes. And he just had this look on his face and he came up and he said, it's gone. I got it all. And I didn't have to have radiation or chemotherapy, so I didn't lose my voice. Um, I was able to eat once my throat had, you know, healed. And um, yeah, it was basically kind of back to, back to me with the golf ball sized chunk of my tongue gone. About two months after my surgery, I realized that I could feel scar tissue forming on my throat. So I went to see a speech therapist who gave me some interesting exercises. And I thought to myself, what if I added singing to this? I'm a rambler and a rover and a wanderer in seams. I've traveled. I, I'm good enough to be in Seattle Women's Chorus, which is saying something. I'm going to sing in Carnegie Hall with a group of choruses from around the world, singing a piece called Street Requiem, which is a 10 part requiem to honor people who live and die on the streets. These levels of excitement that we feel when we're trailblazing come in small increments. And when, when we realize that with the use of robotics, we could offer surgery in a minimally invasive way and patients could preserve their swallowing and speech function, we knew that we had a paradigm shift in the treatment of head and cancers. This is an exciting time to treat cancer patients because we can now offer better treatments that are more effective 
and we can offer hope to patients that otherwise we couldn't do that with.